Many of them told me they, they do not even pray Salat to Dhuhri or Salat al Asr at the schools. In the school, they don't pray. And I ask them, when do you pray your Salat? When we come home, we combine them. You are not in Safar. No, Ma'alin, if we are there, it will be weird for us to do that. They will call us names. So inshallah, what I would say is the solution for that is, the other ulama will also inshallah come into this, is to be proud of your deen. If you're not proud of your deen, if you don't have that strong personality, to be proud of the, what you have and to feel good about it, then you will not be able to stand in front of the challenges that you're facing in this country. Wallahu alam. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa shadu wa la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Ibn Khuldun, a historian, he made that statement and he said, a sign of inferiority that the defeated nations normally mimic those who they perceive to be victorious and better than them. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fi hadith Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu and al-Bukhari affirmed that meaning uh, which is uh, hinted to by Ibn Khuldun when he said لَتَتَّبِعُنَّ سَنَنَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ You will follow the ways of the nations before you Shibran bi shibr, inch by inch, to the extent of one of them would go inside a hole, juhra dabbin ladakhaltumu. You will do like them without understanding why. Subhanallah. I'm not concerned about elders like myself, but I'm concerned about our youth. Look at them, how they dressed and how they present themselves, it's scary. It's very scary. Very scary. Why this is happening? Why are we not uh, simply having trust in our identities? Uh, a lot of the Muhammads, their names miraculously turns into Mu. And we were just driving with a dear brother this afternoon and we saw a sign, a Muslim name. You know, he abbreviated it so it would sound American, would sound not a Muslim name, not an Arab name. This is a big issue and, and a serious issue. And sometimes when we get into Muslim town hall meetings, we end up with this and we want to do something in a, a county level or in a community level. And then they say, should we say we are American Muslims or should we say we're Muslim Americans? And that actually takes almost half of the time dedicated for, to plan the function is we want to figure out, should we say we're Muslim Americans or American Muslims? Which one should we start with? Uh, there is one meaning here I will convey it in a beautiful story that is authentic. Imam al Hakim, Rahimahullah, Akhraja fi Mustadrakihi. When during the reign of Omar ibn al Khattab, عن, when the Christians refused to hand over the keys of Jerusalem but to Amir al Mu'mineen. Because it was written. You know the description of the Sahaba, their characteristics were revealed in the Torah and in the Gospel. ذلك مثلهم في التوراة ومثلهم في الإنجيل. So they, it was written that they are to hand over the keys to Amir al Mu'minin. And Umar, after establishing that Shura, he decided to go. And guess what? Omar was the leader of the Muslim empire. And I'm using the word here just to impress you. 
that already expanded from Bergia in the east all the way in its way to uh, Morocco and Algeria and Andalusia already later on يعني, after his death during the reign of Uthman but he paved the way for it رضي الله عن الجميع he was riding on a mule with his servant and guess what he was alternating with him in fairness that he would ride for a while and then he would allow his servant to ride for a while Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah رضي الله عنه وهو من العشرة he is one of the ten who given glad tidings of Jannah Amin al-Ummah he was the general of the army in the greater Syria and he came to meet him at the outskirts of Jerusalem he came to receive him Subhanallah, he happens to be walking it was his turn to walk so he saw him walking in the ground and he went through a pool of water and Umar radiallahu an took off his shoes and he placed it under his armpit and he lifted his garment so it doesn't get wet and he walked in the mud Amir al-Mu'mineen walking in the mud فأبو عبيدة يعني said to him يا أمير المؤمنين يعني this is not how the leaders are presented or are seen or should present themselves you should have a prestige you should try to look like them of course هذا اجتهاد أبو عبيدة for the welfare of the ummah لا نعيب على اجتهاده but Umar said no to it. Umar said no. Ehin ya Aba Ubaida. Lawkalaha gayruk. Ehin ya Aba Ubaida. If someone else would have said this, Abu Ubaida and Umar, by the way, they had a very close relationship. Umar one day wished that he would have a house filled with men, the caliber of Abi Ubaida ibn al Jarrah, radiallahu an. ف... and he made that statement that should be written with ink made out of gold that you youth should reflect upon it <laughs> we were the most humiliated race in the face of this earth the Arab had no mention whatsoever before Islam. That's why Allah is telling them in the Quran, لَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ كِتَابًا فِيهِ ذِكْرُكُمْ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ We're revealing to you a book that will have your mention and you're fighting it. Are you crazy? Have you no reason? Now, because of that religion, because of that identity, being a Muslim, here you are going to be handed over the keys of a shrine that is also liked and appreciated by other people in the face of this earth. And whenever we seek honor and dignity in anything else other than Islam, Allah will humiliate us. And this is what is happening to us Muslims. This is where our problem is. That certainty, that yaqeen, qawlul qalb, the statement of the heart, that the source of my honor and dignity is my religion, is no longer there. That is why we're doing like the children of Israel, exactly, in the peninsula of Sinai, going in circles. Iti, we entered into that wilderness going in circles and nothing nothing will lead us out except that religion except that identity you're a Muslim and you should be proud that you're a Muslim enough that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about you 
كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس you're the best ummah ever came out for mankind don't seek any dignity any honor anywhere else Islam is the place that's all I can say about that it's already went over my two minutes sorry about it's that okay, Oh, I just want to clarify one more time. Each sheikh has five minutes. That's it. Sorry for the short time, but that's all we have. Five minutes for each sheikh. All right. Faliha Tatum. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. The question we need to ask ourselves is who we are. When I ask myself who am I am, who you are, who we are, we should ask ourselves and how we see ourselves. How I identify myself, how we identify ourselves. Answer of that question should be clear for every Muslim, especially for the young people. The answer should be in your mind, always, in your heart. And the answer is, number one, I am creation of Allah. That's number one. Number two, I am Muslim. If we ask ourselves, why we are Muslim? Why I am Muslim? I am Muslim because I was chosen by Allah. You should feel that way. I am Muslim because I was chosen by Allah. That is favor from Allah. That's blessing from Allah. No one else can get. When you believe you are Muslim and you're proud you are Muslim, you should get something, at least some foundation is that make you stay in that path. Because you need to stay fast. You need to stay fast. You need to stay in that way. Say, La ilaha illallah, thumma staqim. And that's what makes and creates your personality. That's what creates your identity. Your identity is not the color. It's not the background where you're from. That's the make me difference if I am from Somalia, from West Africa, from Pakistan, from uh, Saudi Arabia, or from here. What makes me different from the other people is what I believe. And that what creates the personality of the Muslim. And you should have two things. Number one, you should have ilm. You should have knowledge about your deen. Unless you have knowledge about your deen and you know what you believe and you know what you're practically doing, you cannot stay in that way. You will change again and again, day after day. Unless Allah is always there in your life every day and every moment and every minute of your life, you will have different personalities. So you'll have ilm. And you know the beautiful hadith very amazing hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith, مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Those who Allah wants good for them. If Allah wants good for someone, Allah will grant them understand the Islam. Allah will grant for you the com comprehension of your deen. Reverse this. Take this the other way. If Allah does not want good for someone, Allah will leave that person in ignorant in his deen. That's the main thing. So I encourage you, including myself, we should learn our deen. You cannot keep on something unless you know the meaning of that thing. 
You cannot make business unless you know some principles of the business. You cannot go math school unless you know some math. You cannot proud that you are Muslim unless you know what Islam means. Unless you know what the Quran means. Unless you know what your deen means. Unless you know the ahadith of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's one thing. Number two, I don't want to uh, take more than my time, but number two, you should have what we call al-uswatul hasana. Uswatul hasana means good role modeling. Every one of us has what we call iqtida, modeling. We imitate the others. We listen to the others. We follow the footsteps of the others. But if we have some good role models from our Muslim, early Muslims, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his companion, their followers, our ulama, our good scholars, if we see their picture always in our life, we stay that way. And we're proud of them. And we will try to be like them. So my conclusion is, brothers and sisters, seek the knowledge. That's number one. And wallahi, I always see the youth, I always sit with them, I always and be in their and circles, in their gatherings. And the only people I see always in the halaqa or always in the masjid, or I see them as a good example of Muslims, are those who are seeking the knowledge. Otherwise, sometimes we will see you in the masjid, and the other day you are somewhere else. And you will be different in the school. And you will be different at home. And you will be different at the basketball court. And you will be different from this in the street. And you will be different in the masjid. And some sisters, wallahi, I heard from their lips saying, I am 35% Muslim. I'm not full-time Muslim, Sheikh. 50% Muslim. We don't have what we call 50% or 75% or 50% Muslim. You should be 100% Muslim and should be proud of being Muslim. Jazakumullah khairan. Wallahu yaqul hawi hasibin. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa bihi nasta'inu ala umuri dunya wa deen. Wa salli allahumma ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'in. So there are many sides to the identity dilemma. Uh, I would perhaps look into the personal part of it more intimately. There's a personal touch to every story and every narrative. That as Sheikh Abdul Razak had said here, A, that you are a creation of Allah is at the top. But that you are who you are, that your mother is who she is, that your father is who he is, that you look the way you look, that you have what you have, and that you don't have what you don't have, that you take the steps that you took in life, and that you intend to take what you intend to take. All of these things are things that don't happen haphazardly. There is no sheer coincidence and luck that puts all these complex things together. So a personal touch to our identities as Muslims and as creation of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, and as whoever we are, if you're a brother, if you're a sister, if you're dark skinned, if you're fair skinned, if you're tall, if you're short, all these things, everyone as he or she is, is a masterpiece of God's creation, of the creation of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. And the sooner you're able to come to terms with who you are, everything about you has been designed to be the way it is. And if Allah would have known that there was a better way for you to look like, to talk like, to have a certain mother and father and brothers and cousins who would have made you a better Muslim or a better person, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, out of his infinite wisdom, guess what, would have made you who he Jalla Jalaluhu knows that you would have been the best. And so that you are from the east or from the north, from the south or from the east, is part of the infinite wisdom of Allah. And he very well knew that you are the best of who you could ever become. 
And the fact, for example, that I am a Somali, if Allah Jalla Jalaluhu would have known that I would be a much better Muslim being a Jamaican, I have full trust in Allah that he would have made me one. But he chose me everything that I have, from the way my eyes look, the way my skin looks, the way my mother looks, the steps I took, the mistakes I made, the successes I went through, the poverty and prosperity that may be two different parts, two different uh, terms and, 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 and times of my life. All these things are part of the destiny that we are supposed to have and we honor that and we appreciate that because we know that Allah makes no mistakes. And so we are a masterpiece in the way we are. Personal touch to it. Fi ahsani taqweem. The human being in essence is created in a way that's so profoundly gorgeous that he, Allah Jalla Jalaluhu, only would ever be able to put together something as massively gorgeous as the human beings and the people that we know in this world. فَأَحْسَنَ صُوَرَكُمْ Allah who had perfected, beautified, and made sure that every limb, every tissue, every move, everything happens so beautifully, everything moves together, that there is no other living species as beautiful as the human being. That's number one. So you ought to be very content with who you are as a person and not question that Allah has made you who you are. Very, very important. Number two, that you honor the way other people look and the diversity that other people have. If you are, uh, I don't know, if you look this way and there's another Muslim, another human being that looks that way, that person, even though different from you, is also a masterpiece of God's creation, of the creation of Allah. The Prophet وسلم, says, Al -mu -mir -mu A believer is like a mirror to another mu'min. You feel good about yourself, but you, you also feel good about the design of Allah for others. You honor yourself, and in doing so, you, uh, you honor others. Be content with who you are. Know that there's been no mistake. No mistake was made for you to have the people that you have in your lives and the, the, the way you look. And that other people are also are part of your life. Mother, father, honor them. If your father is this way or that way, believe me, there could be no other better father for you than the one you have right now. If you are a Muslim, believe me, there could be no other faith for you than Islam. If your mother is dark skin or fair skin or if she's knowledgeable or not knowledgeable, believe me, there is no other mother who would ever be better than the mother that you have. Be content with yourself and surely Allah is going to bestow his mercy upon you, inshaAllah. Jazakumullah khairan. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam, ala ashraf al anbiya'i wal mursaleen, wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. I uh, was mentioned in a hadith on the authority of Sahal ibn Sa'id, as Sa'idi. Ja'a rajulun ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqala ya rasulullah, dullani ala amalan idha amiltuhu ahabbani Allah, a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, O Messenger of Allah, direct me to a deed that if I do it, Allah will love me and people will love me. Before I go any further into the hadith, I just want to show you that it is natural, it is natural for you to try to win the approval of other human beings to fit in with other human beings. That's natural. And anyone who tells you that, you know, it's, you shouldn't try to be like other people, or you shouldn't try to do this, or, you know, that's, it's, it's unrealistic. Al-insan madniyun bi A human being is a communal creature by nature. And we love when we have the approval of other people, which is why when you post something on Facebook, you check it every 10 minutes to see how many people liked it. When you post something on Facebook or, or on Twitter, you're checking every five or 10 minutes to see how many people retweeted it or favored it, your tweet, right or wrong. 
If that wasn't the case, then you wouldn't have posted it. So the point that I'm making is that it's natural for a human being to want the approval of other people or the like, or to win the like of other people. That's natural. However, as Muslims, there's a particular demeanor and limits and boundaries that we have to stay within when we go about doing that. There's nothing wrong with having a group of people that you're close with and they all approve of you, they all like you. There's nothing wrong with that. But all of that, just like everything else in our deen, should be within boundaries, within limits, within reason, Islamically. So the man, he asked the Prophet Wasallam, direct me. And this is more, this is important, especially for those of you who are in your younger stages of adolescence, as well as those of us who converted to Islam. And I'm saying that, although many, none of you probably in here converted to Islam, but it's being recorded. And so we don't know where this information is going to end up later on. So we also have to keep that in mind. That perhaps this information is going to reach someone that is not here right now. So I may not necessarily be talking to you, but the person who may hear it later on. But for new shahadas, people who converted to Islam, this is a struggle that they go through. When they take shahada, become Muslim, they are struggling to uh, make this reconciliation between who they were and who they are supposed to be now. And as young adolescents, young adults, you guys go through the same thing. You have your own personalities amongst your peers, and then you try to have a different you know, persona when you're around your elders and your parents. I don't see that as hypocritical behavior. I see that as haya, because if you were disrespectful and vile and the way you are when you are with your friends, when you're around your parents, then there's definitely something wrong with you. But you try to put on a good face in front of your parents, and then when you're around your peers and your friends, you kind of, you get a little loose. I don't see that as hypocritical behavior. I see that as you being diplomatic with your shaksiya with your personality. And the Prophet Sallallahu wasn't the same way all the time. When he was with his companions, he was one way. When he was with his wives, he was another way. When he was with this one, he was another way. That's not being hypocritical. That's called being diplomatic with your shaksiya, with your personality. And that's okay, that's okay. I don't want anybody to walk away feeling like, well, you know, I have to be the same way all the time in order to have a strong personality. That's not the case. That's not even realistic. But he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, direct me to a deed that if I do it, Allah will love me and the people will love me. So he's trying to combine these two, caught between these two things, which is what many of us find ourselves caught in between. So listen to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's response. He said, is had fi dunya yuhibbuk Allah? Was had fi ma inda nas yuhibbuk in nas? He said that if you make zuhud, which is to stay away from anything that is in the dunya that has no benefit for your akhirah, staying away from anything that is of no benefit for you in this dunya for your akhirah. Stay away from the things that do not benefit you in this dunya for your akhirah, and Allah will love you. And stay away from the things that people consider important to them, and the people will love you. You ever see somebody, when you try to compete with someone else, this brings about jealousy, it brings about envy, hatred, and it creates a toxic situation between you and the other person because the person sees you as a threat. When you don't compete with what the things that people have, people automatically love you because they don't consider you a threat. I'll give you an example. There was a speaker, he was here a couple of, a couple of weeks ago. And he was with uh, another brother and they were doing some shopping. And the brother said, um, this jacket, particular blazer, a jacket, looks nice on you. And the brother said, no, that is not my thing. You know, it's nice. But, you know, Brother Shadid is known for wearing those things, and I don't want to compete with him in that. That's, that's his thing. That's not my thing. It's nice, but I don't want to do that. And I'm just using this as an example to show how staying away from things, and that's, that's not to say that I would be, I didn't pioneer wearing a blazer. Like, that's not, I didn't pioneer that, all right? 
something that I like to do. Nonetheless, um, I wouldn't have hated the person because they decided to do that. But he was using wisdom, and that is that you stay away from things that are important to other people, and people will just naturally love you. But when you compete with people in the things that are important to them, then you create jealousy. You create a situation for je So what I'm saying to you as a Muslim, you should have your own personality. We live in an environment right now where being different is acceptable. We have since moved out of that era where everybody had to be the same. You go to places like Saudi Arabia, everybody wears a white thobe. Everybody. And if you wear any other color thobe, you stand out like a sore thumb. Everybody, all the women, they wear black. Black niqab, black gloves, black shoes, black everything. And if you wore another color, you stand out. So as the saying goes, that when in Rome, you do what the Romans do. You don't compete with people and the things that are important to them. And even the scholars have a term for this, libas ashura, that you are wearing a different type of clothes to try to distinguish yourself. The point that I'm making is that you don't have to be like everybody else. You can be yourself. And as long as you are yourself, people will respect you for that. And inshallah ta'ala, you will win the hearts of other people. Wallah ta'ala a'lam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before we continue, um, each shaykh has to really hurry up because we're on a time limit and we only got five minutes each. All right, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. No, I'm not going to please. Wallahi, more benefit. I'm giving up my minutes to Sheikh Abdul Bari because I will benefit more this way, inshallah. Please, Sheikh. Allah, you better. No, it's not going to happen. It's yours. I'm going to speak. No, no, no. 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 <laughs> no no roller every minute, huh? Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillah. It's true that uh, in this society that we're living in right now, it's okay to be different. But you know, one of the biggest challenges facing our youth and the Muslims in general and the society that we're living in today is that it's okay to be different. But you can be anything you want. But the only thing that's not acceptable, that's looked down upon, is really to be a Muslim. You can be anything you want. All, everything is acceptable. But we're living in a world that's constantly trying to make us anything, or something else, anything but Muslim. And that's, that's difficult. But you also have to realize that it's okay to be different, but it's also important to make a difference. It's okay to be different, but we also have to make a difference. When people start seeing Islam in the media, especially in CNN, NBC, CBC, whatever you may have, especially Fox, right? always bashing Islam. You know what? What we need to do as Muslims, we have to, be, we have to practice and put Islam into practice to be the best Muslims, to be the best Muslim that we can be. To be the best that we can be. We have to stand out, but stand out concerning what? Stand out. We have to stand out. We have to be the best that we can be, meaning we have to be the most honest of people. We have to be the most helpful people because if we're the most helpful and the best neighbors and the best classmates and the best co-workers, then it will not matter what the media will say about us. Because you know, like they say, your actions speak so loud, I can't even hear what you're saying. And so let your actions speak and we should be proactive. We should be the first at the, you know, at the soup kitchens. We should be the first. We should be there when there's a calamity. We should be helpful people. And that's actually, that's our identity as Muslims. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam before revelation came, he was the most honest of all the people. He was the most helpful. That's why when he came back from the mountain, Khadija radiallahu anha, she said, by Allah, Allah would never, would never humiliate you. Then why? Because the Prophet, she said that he was, you know, he was the most kind to his guests. He was always there to help those who were in need. Meaning he was always 
beneficial to society and helpful. And so the Muslim identity, especially living in a non-Muslim country, especially living in a non-Muslim country, we actually have to stand out and we have to be known for you know, our good characteristics and uh, attributes. And so if, if we are like that, you know, then, and also we should, you have to understand that if we are like that, the characteristics and attributes of Islam and the teachings of Islam and what Islam teaches is praiseworthy to all people. I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of uh, ideology you may have, there's not a single person on the face of this earth that will go against being kind to the orphan or helping the needy or being kind to their neighbors. I mean, everyone can, everyone will accept, or everyone accepts that that is a praiseworthy, uh, praiseworthy attribute. And these are praiseworthy characteristics. And that's what we Muslims uh, have to embody us. We have to embody the teachings of the Quran in our daily lives. And we have to, just like the Messenger of Allah was described, he was described by the companions, كَانَ خُلُقُهُ Quran. His khuluq, his, his khuluq, his characteristics and, and attributes, he was the embodiment of the teachings of the Quran in, the, in, the, in, in all, his, all his affairs. And so, we have to, you know, we have to, and we have to um, put into practice the teachings of Islam. And at the same time, we also have to seek knowledge. We have to know. Um, we, have to, we have to do things based on, based on knowledge. Because in, for, for Muslims to live uh, in the world nowadays, and for us to really make uh, an impactful da'wah, you know, we have to bring the light, the fact that Islam is practical in its purest form in our modern times. I mean, without the need also to compromise. You know, we have to show, we have to show them that. We have to show them what Islam is. And all, you know what? All the tools that we need to do that are in the Quran and the Sunnah. And so, it's just that we have to return to the Quran and Sunnah. We have to practice and put it into practice. And you'll see that if we apply our teachings correctly, uh, these, it, we will have you know, the, best, the best of character. We, have, we, will have, we will be the best of neighbors and co-workers and classmates. And so, it's okay, you know, when you're going out and about, it's okay to be afraid, right? To, being afraid is not cowardly. Uh, being afraid, but being paralyzed by your fears is cowardice. I mean, it's okay to be afraid. Sometimes, you know, when you see things and you're afraid, you're afraid to do this and do that. But don't let that stop you from doing things that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, you know, have some, uh, have some uh, courage to, to be proud of your religion and realize that also, realize the great blessing that we have. The blessing of guidance, the blessing of la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. By real, realizing that, realizing that we're, up, we're upon the truth also gives us strength. I mean, the people, if, if you are upon falsehood, people who are upon falsehood, they try to hide falsehood. You know, when a person lies, you try to hide it. But when, you're, when you have the truth, then you should be proud of it. Because, you know, you, don't hide, you shouldn't hide the truth. The truth, you're upon the truth and the others upon falsehood. It's, you shouldn't be afraid to show that. Wallahu ta'ala. Jazakum khair. Thank you, Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya, Sheikh Muhammad Shinawi, Sheikh Sheikh Sadid Muhammad, Sheikh Muhammad Dini, Sheikh Abdul Zahra Hashi, Sheikh Karim Abu Zaid, and Sheikh Yusuf Abdullah. We want to we ask that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala increases them all in knowledge. I mean, inshallah. And uh, our next speaker is going to be Sheikh Yusuf Abdullah. Inshallah, for the tafadil al mashkur wa majoor Sheikh Yusuf. Ahmed always sends money to either Somalia for his loved ones or Sudan to pay the tuition for his daughter, but he is unable to reach the Hawala offices due to his busy schedule. Miriam lives in Europe. She regularly sends money to her mother in Somalia, but Miriam is unable to visit Somali Hawala offices at her city because of snow and lack of parking, etc. 
Ali works at a very busy NGO who pays vendors, employees, and refugees. But every time he needs to make payments, he has to visit one of the local Hawala offices, line up, and waste time. What is their problem? They all want to send money, but are unable to visit local Hawala offices due to their busy life, right? By signing for Etowah Call Mobile Services, their problem is solved. Etowah Call Mobile Money Transfer enables instant money transfer from one place to another place using mobile technology via etowahcall.com through Sahal of Gullis Telecom, EVC Plus of Hormund, and a coffee of Telsum and traditional branch pickups. Now Ahmed, Miriam, and Ali can send money to any mobile or via traditional branch pickup without visiting any local branch office by using their Etowah Call account via their computer or mobile handset.